All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another deep dive. Uh, today's super awesome guest. I have with us uh, Matteo from Pragma, and they are some basically what zero knowledge experts on oracles. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but but hoping yeah. I've, I've been really excited for this one. So um, uh, it's great to have you on. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, um, and yeah, happy to to talk about Pragma. Yeah, we'd love to find out. So you um. As one of the co-founders, you know, how did you kind of get into the Oracle space and how did you like start an Oracle company? Yeah, <laughs> that's a, a good question because uh, not a lot of people are uh, building like uh, Oracle. So uh, it's kind of, uh, so me and my co-founder, we were uh, building on StarkNet uh, since like uh, late 2021. Uh, and so my co-founder Matthias was uh, working at Maker uh, in order to uh, bridge that to to Starknet. Uh, and so uh, there was this question because so Maker is using their uh, own Oracle, uh, so it's like uh, Chronicle Labs now, uh, yep. but basically they're leveraging it for uh, pretty much every EVM chain. Uh, but on Starknet, uh, it's not live, uh, and so Maker had to. Uh, pick an oracle for uh, their unit uh, on Starknet. And so there was this discussion uh, with Maker. Uh, and that's basically how we started to uh, dig into oracles at first, uh, because I think that uh, most of people are using Chainlink now. Uh, and not a lot of people are like digging really uh, like the architecture, how it works and everything. So we started to uh, dig it at that point. Uh, and that's how we we became really interesting by or oracles and how we we started to to work on them. Um, and so mainly we're just uh, leveraging everything that uh, Starkware uh, is building um, and like trying to uh, apply it to to data basically. So that's yeah how we we got uh, into this. Yeah. Well, I guess for. for just for like real fast, like under a minute, like what is Starkware for those people that don't know? Uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, so, so Starkware is like the, the company uh, building Starknet. Uh, so they are, uh, at the beginning, it's mostly like uh, cryptographers, uh, mathematicians that are um, like using us to Stark proof in order to uh, scale Ethereum. Uh, and so they built uh, StarkX, they built uh, StarkNet. Um, and so it's uh, like a, a company uh, building on Starks. And so the, the co -founder, one of the co founder uh, actually created uh, Starks. Uh, so Eddie Ben Sasson. Um, so yeah, in a, in a nutshell, that's what they're, they're, they're doing. Yeah, they were, they were one of the first people to kind of try and tackle the ZK roll up, right? Just how can you? Yeah, so it, actually, I think it was the first. So with StarkX, yeah. uh, the first Validium uh, in production, uh, and then StarkNet might be uh, the first general purpose camera. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> and is it an is it an L2? Like, is it a proper L2 on Ethereum, or is it? Do they say they're an L1? StarkNet. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's an L2. Yeah. It's an L2. Everything okay. settles on on Ethereum. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, that that works. Um, okay, well, yeah. I mean, we can just. I guess we'll just jump right into it, and we can start whiteboarding out how Pragma works. And you you'd kind of talked before, so this is. You guys are in between versions right now, and and this will be the upcoming version. We'll be whiteboarding out, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we are okay. like kind of like in in between everything. Uh, so yeah, we we'll talk about the the V two. But the, it's pretty much like the, the same idea. There's just like one uh, difference uh, at the end, but it's like basically the the same high level idea uh, behind everything. So, yeah. Nice. All right. So let's go, go to Pragma. Uh, so I guess what what would be like the ideal use case for you guys, you know? Yeah, so, know, like, uh, would it be like yeah. ETH US dollar feed we can, we can start with? I think that would be, you know, are you guys looking, You because you guys, the, the, the Stark X one or the Pragma X, if I'm not 
mistaken. Like you guys aren't just trying to be an oracle on Starknet. You're trying to be an oracle for everyone, right? So yeah, the, our positioning is uh, so right now it's only on Starknet. Yep. Um, mostly because of uh, business reasons, not especially like technical ones. Um, and uh, in terms of use cases, uh, we're really focused on uh, financial use cases. Uh, so we are not like uh, providing any types of uh, VRF or like connecting to APIs. That's not what we're doing. Uh, so financial use cases and more precisely, everything that requires uh, a lot of computation. So you can, of course, have basic uh, like uh, asset prices, like the ETH price, uh, for instance. Uh, but the like what, what's really different is all the computation that you can have on top of raw data. Uh, and so like uh, computing, for instance, like implied volatility is this, this kind of things that require uh, more computation than like a uh, classic median is that is like where it's most specialized uh, and where the, the oracle is better. Cool. Um, so do you want to do you want to draw that one out? Like we need an ETH US dollar price on mainnet, and then we'll see how sure. you guys. We can start from yeah. Exactly. All right. So so we'll draw mainnet over here. So be our ETH. I don't know stable coin or something. Um, and then how do you guys work? How does the, the first person? So I guess if this person needs the price of ETHUS dollar, do they have to request it on your chain? Do they have to, how do they go about so, getting it? So, so yeah, right now on the, so it's only from Starknet, right? But okay. yeah, anyway, like it's going the, the pretty much the same mechanism for uh, any rollup. So on the V1, it was uh, a push oracle. Basically everything was computed on uh, Starknet. Okay. But uh, the, the, the V2 is basically uh, a ZK rollup of its own. So, so, so we're going to be a ZK rollup onto Starknet or onto Ethereum? Right, right now, it, it's set, it's settling on testnet on Ethereum. So it's uh, an L2, uh, basically. Okay, so you guys are going to uh, be, you guys won't be using Snarknet. You'll be. So we have, layered. you can you can think of it as uh, our own Starknet. Uh, okay. It's our own ZK rollup. Starknet Pragma. Okay, exactly. So it's like uh, I don't know, <laughs> like if you want links of this kind of things, but it's like called Madara. Madara. Uh, we're building. It's like um, it, you can think of it as uh the the equivalent of the OP stack, but to deploy uh Starknet chains. Okay. Cool. Um. Okay, so then you guys will be settling to Ethereum then. Yeah, so like that's the, the 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 most straightforward ID. We can we could also like be on L three and set all on Starknet, uh. But yeah, basically it's just that uh, verifier contracts are m much more battle tested uh, in Solidity, and so it's uh, easier to deploy fast on on Ethereum. Yep, <laughs> I get it. Um, okay, so cool. So assuming we have this layer two over here, I mean. Now, are there stakers? How do we get ETH US? How do we come to consensus on ETH US dollar prices? Good question. Okay, so like um, Madara is like uh, a decentralized sequencer. Uh, and so basically, uh, it's like uh, it's it, Madara is built on a substrate. So it's just like uh, we took substrate, uh, we put inside the Cairo VM. Uh, pretty much like uh, substrate is polka dot, uh, right? That's exactly, exactly. Oh. But uh, yeah, you you can leverage it to like build anything. So you uh, use like, like the substrate. Uh, it's similar to like if you used the Cosmos SDK. You used, exactly. You used substrate to build your chain, and now you're gonna throw in the Cairo VM and checkpoint to Ethereum and have nothing to do with polka dot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's it. And so we, Super we cool. already have like, why this and not starting from scratch is because we already have like uh, everything that comes with a uh, substrate. So like the consensus, uh, okay. with, like uh, grandpa. Uh, and so uh, we already have this out of the box. We don't need to build uh, another consensus. Uh, there's also a lot of tooling that is already existing. So there's like always problems of compatibility because it's the the Cairo VM inside now, 
but uh, we already have like everything that comes with substrate. So what uh, would, so that... if you could, I mean, like I'm, I'll be honest, I'm more familiar with like the Cosmos side. I, I believe it's very similar, okay. but you know, like what would, what's like a TLDR for the consensus mechanism, I guess, for substrate. Like you would have some, it's proof of stake, like you would have a, a couple stakers so over here. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's a proof of authority. Okay. Um, so it's like uh, much more efficient, uh, like up to 100 uh, validators. Okay. Um, and so uh, above that limit, it gets like uh, messier and slower. Uh, so right now it's it's grandpa i think uh, the name of the consensus yep uh, and babe so um basically it's um uh like the yeah it's a proof of authority we can of course change the consensus uh, because like substrate is just the, the blockchain sdk uh but it's much more easier to start with uh grandpa and what's already uh, built in the the sdk but what I mean, what's the difference, and why we choose uh, Substrate yeah. over uh, the Cosmos SDK is mainly because the Cairo VM uh, is um, no. much more efficient in Rust, uh, and so there's no uh, Cairo VM in Go yet, and so it's uh, harder to to get it in the the Cosmos SDK. Well, I feel like that's actually a lot of people are rewriting the Cosmos SDK in Rust now, so they can use zk library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like easy it's, it's like, like much yeah, easier for people to... yeah <laughs> sure sure but like the is going to take time to to build these kind of things uh and also like it's like substrate is already battle tested right there's like yep. a lot of pirate chains already running uh in rust uh but i think that some people are trying to put the Cairo vm inside of the the cosmos sdk Nice. Uh, we'll see how it goes, uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, mainly the our choices for the the, the design. Yeah. So so then, you, do these guys have to stake as well to be validators, or like, do you guys yeah. are you guys gonna have your own uh, token so, that they so stake? Right or? now, yeah. At some point, we will have a token, okay. uh, but right now it's like a the, like it's. A, uh, a few nodes uh, that are running uh, on testnet, so that's us, uh, Starkware. Um, there's also Lambda class, uh, if you know, they're like pretty close to the Starknet ecosystem. Yep. So it's like just a, a few nodes on testnet. Okay. Uh, but the goal, yeah, we're going to, to have a token at some point for this. Uh, we're also looking forward uh, to Eigenlayer. Uh, and I think there's like a, a sweet spot with Eigenlayer to have like dual staking uh, with uh, trust Boa from ETH and also your own token. Um, so yeah, that's like the the how we are going to to run this. Okay, so so this could be staking or eigenlayer at some point in the future. Um, yes. So TL. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The the the, the real like uh, the really important thing is that um, the, the those people are only um. Um, like ordering transactions. Okay, uh, right? so this you is just the have... sequencer piece. Exactly, uh, okay. and so there's no, um, th th there's no really. Maybe I'm wrong at that point, but I don't see a lot of um, uh, cases where like ordering is uh, critical uh, because basically it's just like pieces of data that are going to be aggregated after, and don't, we don't really care about. Uh, like which transaction comes first in terms of uh, data because at the end it's just like a uh, median price. Yep. Uh, and so th those people are not responsible for uh, the accuracy of uh, the aggregation because um, they're, they're only responsible for the ordering and then we get, uh, there's a prover in between uh, our chain and uh, Ethereum. And so this prover is going to uh, be responsible for the, the trustlessness. Um, and so, yeah, it doesn't need, like the, the number of sequencer doesn't introduce uh, trust assumptions, right? It's just like for uh, ordering. Think, well, well, they could do inclusion too, right? Or no? Or I mean, like so they, they could make you do a forced inclusion, right? Yeah. But yeah. It, it, so 
ideally uh, we need like uh, feeds that are really fast yeah, and so that's not really optimal uh, so there's also problems with potentially um, like uh, not including transactions uh, into blocks uh, that kind of things but if like we have uh, a piece of data uh, and like the, the the trustlessness is guaranteed by the proof uh, and not by like the the number of validators we have um, okay so what would be if that so, makes sense well, well let, let, let's go into it so it actually makes sense for me <laughs> um what would so i guess like if we wanted the eth us dollar price like this guy over here he's he says like listen i'll, I'll pay somebody some money if you give me an eth us dollar price who's who's the person that's submitting it uh where where so is e that guy so uh so like uh we didn't tackle the part from uh, our chain to uh ethereum itself well, well it's a uh, roll up but... right so you would yeah exactly just roll so up, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly so you you so there's the the um, like if we take like from the 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 left of the the chart we have like the data providers that are assigning data and sending it sending it to our chain right so That's these would the, be like the so like these data providers over here, are these exactly. these are these are different than the validators, correct? They are, yeah. Okay, are they staked? So right now, no. Uh, okay. The goal is to make them stake at some point. But right now, no, because it's permissioned. Um, okay, so, this, so these are need... just uh, this is like a POA as well. Exactly, those are uh, trusted people. Exactly. Okay. Uh, that are signing data. Uh, and sending it to the roller. So they would they, sign. They, they sign what, like ETH US dollar, or is this like a z a zero knowledge proof of ETH US dollar? No, it's just like a uh, basic uh, signature. Okay, so they would that you send to the network. So they would say like the ETH US dollar price currently is eighteen hundred dollars. I'm throwing it. I verify that exactly. and I'm putting it on chain. Okay. Uh, so now it's like in the mempool, right, of the the chain before uh, being like aggregated. Oh, so uh, it's in so, the mem the mempool of the the rollup, right? Exactly. So it's For these guys. Like kind of the it's kind of the rollup, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this this will be uh, the, mem the the mempool will be uh, encrypted, uh, and it's really important to uh, have this in order, like to have at some point uh, permissionless uh, data providing. Uh, so, so they right don't now... just copy each other. Exactly. Yep. Uh, but right now it's like trusted actors, so it's uh, not really uh, useful right. to have an encrypted mempool. Uh, but the, the, that's the, 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 the end goal here. And so then um, the, the sequencer, uh, so there's like a, a leader election uh, in the sequencer. We have one leader uh, that is taking the transactions uh and uh basically sequencing them and uh getting a, a median ETH price uh, because uh that's why it, what is requested medianize is so, plus sequences and, and so yeah. it, basically it's just like a, a carol program that is uh on the chain uh that um yeah. computes the the median price of ETH and so it generates uh, a Cairo trace. And so this trace is what is going to be used uh, by the prover to uh, prove the statement. Uh, and so to prove uh, the, the aggregation. So this Cairo trace, this is like a proof of that so, the data was signed and aggregated correctly. And this is the ending it, result. Yeah, it, it's not the, the proof yet. Okay. Uh, it's like uh, what the program uh, generates and what is going to be the input uh, of the prover uh, that is going to prove that the, the execution happened well. Uh, so like before getting to the prover, um, like the, the aggregation is not like uh, a malicious actor can like uh, if the sequencer wants to uh, manipulate it, he could. Yep. But uh, then, like once it uh, it's, it leaves the prover, it cannot be uh, manipulated, right? Um, so what so would happen they... is these guys they push it to the L two, 
right? And then the L2, the prover over here grabs stuff from the L2 to push to Ethereum. Exactly. So the prover grabs like the, the Cairo trace. Okay. Then he performs the, the proving. And so in terms of uh, so what, what the, the, the biggest challenge we have here uh, is like the how do we improve the prover? Because like uh, ver verify a proof is um, is pretty easy to do, and that's why like you you get scalability. It's because like of the the succinctness to verify the proof. So it's like uh, logarithmic time to verify a proof. Uh, but the prover itself, the job to prove the statement, is is uh, a little harder than just uh, naively compute everything. Uh, I think for a stack proof, uh, I'm going to have to double check, but it's like uh, a complexity of the, twice the complexity of just uh, naively uh, performing the computation. And so there's like uh, a latency for the proving, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, once the set statement is proven, we have uh, a proof that we can verify on Ethereum. So we have a verifier contract on ETH, or uh, we could like uh, have a verifier contract on any chain. So, so we can put, uh, just... put Matic down here or Polygon, yeah, sorry. Exactly. And then he, he the proof could go here as well. And then you could have BSC down here. Yeah. And the proof could so go it, here. It's, it's really easy to integrate EVM chains because we already have a verifier contract in Solidity. Yep. Uh, all the chains is just like uh, getting a new verifier contract. But it's basically yeah the 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 flow, That's um, super cool. and and so the, the the main bottleneck here is uh, still the prover, uh, and I think it's like uh, the bottleneck for a, a lot of use use cases. Uh, so for instance, for zkml this kind of stuff, we really have to reduce the latency of the proving, uh, in order to be able to uh, have like faster proving and be able to verify statements uh, easier. So that's yeah. Basically, that's the, the the whole flow here. You guys are trying to focus on getting this time down, basically. How can you? So yeah, uh, there's like the the whole industry is working towards this. Yeah. So from like hardware hardware improvements to like software improvements itself. Uh, so yeah. Nice. Um, super cool. So I guess with the ETHUS dollar, um, I mean, what's the goal here? We'll just pick piece by piece, I guess. This is, um, how many parties are you trying to medianize? Or would that be up to the user? So yeah, the, the, the long-term goal is really to uh, make this permissionless in terms of data providing. Um, and so how do we do this? There's two main challenges. Uh, there's uh, the, the, the first one is uh, having some kind of proof of stake mechanism. So we want to ensure that uh, people that are trying to manipulate the price are slashed. Uh, and there's uh, a reputation uh, system as well. So we want to make sure that uh, everyone and each each data provider is unique. Uh, and you, you could argue that uh, this is getting done through uh, like uh, proof of stake, uh, but we still need to make sure that uh, data providers uh, don't farm accounts and try to, to manipulate it because like um, the, the, the main challenge with the, the proof of stake of uh, the data providers is that there's no uh, there's no truth when it comes to data, right? There's no right price of ETH. Uh, there's different price on different market markets. Uh, and so what we can ensure uh, like with math is basically that statistically 99.9% of the time we end up with um, the, the correct price. Um, and so the, 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 the proof of stake will be designed to statistically uh, give the output like 99.9% of the time uh, with the, the, the right price. Um, so um, yeah, like that's the, the, the gap we need to fill uh, to get uh, permissioned uh, into permissionless data providing. Yeah. Well, it's super um, tough because there's no, if you're trying to do really fast, there's like no time for disputes really in this whole thing. You know? Yeah, so that's why it's like just statistically, right? We, yep. 
we want to make sure that statistically when uh, the data is consumed and so when it's like the the full right uh statistically we're we have the the, the right piece of data uh and so that's like uh the the main challenge uh, here is like how do we design the the proof of stake uh, for data providers not for like the the chain itself yeah was there any thought of making these guys the data providers or like why do why uh, would I you mean, keep them separate it, w it was my question uh, because their the, their jobs are really different uh so for the the validators themselves they are just like uh sequencing data so sequencing like the 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 and so ideologically uh that's two really different roles uh data providers uh are of course providing data and so we cannot verify uh if what they are doing is right because uh there's no proof that some piece of data is uh the the correct one but for validators we can uh verify that uh, what they are doing is uh like correct uh and so we can uh slash validators much more easily than data providers so that's just two completely different jobs yeah uh, but i mean as somebody we, who was yeah like weren't yeah, you looking at restaking we mix, <laughs> yeah but like for, for for what for uh data providers yeah like, like, weren't, like you, uh, weren't you looking at eigenlayer isn't that sort of the same thing so it's much more for like censorship resistance okay. uh, and for the the, the sequencers uh, and I think that, that once you get like uh, around like tens or hundreds uh, of like validators, it's just like for censorship resistance. It's not to uh, like okay. uh, have trustlessness because you you have trustlessness to the, the, the proofs. Yep. And, and so just see if I can add like just a little bit about this. Uh, it's also so that those people uh, cannot collude because the, the validators at some point when the everything is going to be permissionless are those uh, that are going to slash the data providers. Uh, and so we also need to make sure that those people are different actors. Yep. Cool. Um, okay. Next question I had. Um, when you're pushing this proof over, what are you proving? Is this like, is this like a light client that this is that this was all good or is this just you know are you proving that basically these were the inputs in the medians and then you came to consensus here right you you prove basically the the whole execution okay uh, and so you prove that uh so it's exactly like the same as uh, as it rolled up so and we also post the data on uh, the target chain. Of course, so it's not a validium; it's like a full uh, ZK rollup. So we prove like uh, the inputs uh, and the execution uh, in order to get like the 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 final the final aggregated price. So what's the difference, I guess, between like like if this is the main rollup, you're rolling up to Ethereum. What's the difference between this one versus the the proofs that the prover are doing? There's no, uh, yeah, I don't know what the 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 black uh black. This, this is like the L two. This is the L two signifier, like that you're an L two off of Ethereum, yeah, so, so you're like rolling up. Is this the? It, are they, it, I mean... Basically, the 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 prover is it, itself what, uh, it's like the. You don't have an L two if you don't have a proof at some point, but maybe people won't agree because there's this debate whether like. Uh, optimism is uh, really a run up <laughs> right now because you don't have fraud proofs. Yes, but I, I would say that uh, you you are not an L two, and if you don't have uh, proof, it can be either like validity proofs or uh, fraud proof. Uh, but uh, like the the L two itself is going through the, the the prover, right? We are not posting data without pro proving it. So this <laughs> arrow is not really I'll like. Fix it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It's um, not really like uh, exactly, but it's <laughs> like the so so yeah. There, there's two ways of uh, consuming data as well. Okay. Uh, because you can either uh, get the proof and verify it, but it takes more time than um, having like uh, a storage proof or using uh, another kind of bridge. 
uh, because there's latency for the proving. Uh, even if it's getting reduced right now, it's still uh, a few minutes to 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 prove statements. Um, and so you can uh, from our rollup to uh, any other chain, for instance, you could uh, use uh, layer, layer zero or any any kind of bridge uh, that supports it and just get data through this. Uh, and so improve uh, the latency of like the the the, the bridging part as well. Yeah. No, I mean, I was just thinking, like, would you be, if you're ch doing it to all of them, would you technically be like a roll up off of all of these if there's no bridged assets? Technically, yes. <laughs> there you go. So it's, I, I mean, right now, yes, but I think at some point we'll be able to, uh, because when you want to uh, get the the ETH price, you don't really want to prove the the whole state, right? Okay. Because we're like aggregating like other assets. Uh, and if you're on Malik, you don't want to like, uh, you don't want to verify the the whole state with like all the data we have. Uh, and so at some point, the prover will be much more specialized, uh, and so it will like reduce the costs as well to to verify proofs. But technically, right now we're uh, so we are only supporting uh, Starknet for now. But technically, at some point, we'll be uh, like multiple settlement layers uh, for the the rollup itself. Yeah, but it's not like, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's not like uh, in the ID is not like uh, because I know people are working on this, like having a uh, a rollup that settles on uh, different chains. Uh, but the main thing is that there's no communication between uh, Polygon and Ethereum, for, for example. And so if you lose the state somewhere, you cannot really retrieve it. Uh, well, so Polygon that's why, can, I think. Yeah, but, but I mean, for instance, if you're like on, uh, on Ethereum uh, and you lose the state on uh, Polygon, you cannot really reconstruct the, sure. the rollup from Polygon. Uh, so, yeah, it's a weird, uh, <laughs> weird uh, settlement. Yeah, I mean, on that, like, would you say, like, I know you're trying to do it for really fast prices. Like, let, let's say you had a user on Matic who wanted to, um, you know, and then they're going to get the proofs from the prover and verify it in their contract. Would they want to wait until it was finalized on Ethereum or or finalized on Starknet if you're an L2 there? Like, like what would be the risk there? So um, if you want to use it really fast, uh, you may want to uh, bypass the the proof and just uh, get it from like the um, the the how do we say this? Um, yeah, I lost the word, but uh, the the soft finality from our rollup, and so you only okay. rely. And so for, for once you get the proof, uh, you're hundred percent sure, and so you have trustlessness. But if you uh, bridge uh, before the proof is generated. It's uh, it's like optimistically uh, proven, and uh, it's you, it's like exactly the same as uh, when you bridge. Uh, for instance, if you use uh, Orbiter and you bridge from Starknet to yep. Optimism, the proof settles like eight hours after, and so you're uh, optimistically uh, bridging. Uh, so you assume that uh, the the, the the soft finality is enough to to bridge, uh, and I mean it. I think it will depend a lot on where you consume the data, um, right. because on on Ethereum you have like thousands of validators, and so you really want uh, to have something that is resilient and not introduce uh, more trust assumptions. And so you might want to have the the final proof, but if you're on optimism, for instance. Uh, you don't have fraud proofs, and so you you may be okay to consume data from the the soft finality. So that's like nice a trade off when you <laughs> nice little dig but at yeah. optimism there. Like it? <laughs> no, I I mean I think <laughs> it's like uh, yeah, a lot of people are debating about this, uh, but I think that you really should have proofs to to have something that we can call a roll up. Uh, but yeah, anyway, super cool. Um, no, I, I think I have a decent idea about how it works. Um, I mean, I guess the question would be, A, what am I missing? And then also like, what, what are you, are you, what other pieces of data are you planning besides just 
kind of prices. So yeah, the the idea is that uh, on on the rollup, so it's a zk rollup, and so uh, we have a lot of computation, uh, and so our our main focus is not really to provide ETH USD price, uh, because uh, uh, we can leverage uh, the computation we have to to compute uh, much more things. The idea is really to try to bring uh, the types of data that you have in TradFi. So uh, like the uh, one of the first thing we built is like uh, implied volatility feeds uh, for options protocols. Uh, and so like all the parameterization requires a lot of computation. Uh, and so that's where uh, the Oracle is uh, much better because of the, the succinctness of the, the ZK proofs. Right. Um, so that's, yeah, mainly we are trying to uh, tackle uh, like highly uh, computational feeds, uh, not especially. So of course we are providing ETH prices, these kind of things. Uh, also because on StarkNet, uh, we're kind of the, the only solution there. Uh, and so people uh, need this for lending protocols, this, this kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, the idea is really to focus on like high computation, this kind of thing. Nice. Um, uh, but yeah, overall, I think you have like a pretty good idea about uh, everything, like the, the, the global architecture. Um, yeah, I mean, don't ask yeah. me to say how any of the zero knowledge stuff works. I get <laughs> this is just I mean, like the black box right here. We'll just assume. It, <laughs> I mean, a, a lot of people are going to be able to build with this part without yes. uh, getting their hands into this. Uh, so yeah, I think that's like, what's really exciting about zero knowledge proof is also that, uh, it's getting accessible to everyone, even if you're not a, a cryptographer, uh, with all the, the ZK EVMs that are developing their provers, you'll just be able to, to use this. Uh, so yeah, that, that's also what's really exciting here. Nice. Um, well, yeah. And I mean, when is, when is this thing going to launch and when is, um, when are you guys looking to do like the whole token piece and start to decentralize it? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I mean, it, it's on testnet right now, but nice. there's uh, a big gap between uh, a good testnet and uh, production ready mainnet, especially for uh, ZK yes. rollups. That's like the the teams building the ZK rollups just uh, like uh, launched it recently. They've been working on this for uh, two years, if not more um and so uh, the, the the target would be end of the year on mainnet uh but that's okay. just like a, a target and for the token uh, after um basically because uh so a, a lot of the parts can be uh done without a token uh, so we talked about like the sequencer you're not yep. forced to have a token uh, and i think that uh, a token for an oracle uh, wouldn't make sense uh like for and i think in general tokens should focus on one use case uh, because right now you can see that there's a lot of different uh, people that are doing a lot of different jobs um and right. so we need to focus on like finding the uh the real like the value record point and i think the token should not like help to uh, decentralize the rollup itself but more to uh, fuel or uh, like the, the market participants and so the data providers and the data consumers uh, because that's like uh, where the value uh, flows in the system. Well, just um, curious. So they still need parts to, to figure out here. Like could this could theoretically be anybody, right? Yeah. So I mean, like given a verifier contract here or there, like this doesn't have to be a specialized role. This Like the user themselves could do the prove, be the prover in a trustless way, yeah. right? Yeah. So, potentially yes but it's like uh really hard to run like the the piece of software is not like anyone cannot really run a program right it's like uh, well, something I mean, this really would, specialized yeah. uh, and so what like uh, this part of uh, the system is going to be either uh i think that at some point we we will be uh, outpaced by all the teams on the program and so we'll just like uh, use okay. either uh, like decentralized networks of provers or uh, data markets uh, such as like uh, Neil. I don't know if you, if you heard about this. Uh, but it's just like proving markets and you just outsource the, the proving. 
because those people are only focusing on the the, the proving part and they, they would be much better at this. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd imagine in the future it would be like a service like Gelato or some keeper network that automates this thing and is, specializes in heavy compute yeah. stuff. But um, yeah, no. So, I mean, the, the only two pieces you would really need to decentralize would be like the data reporters and the, the sequencers. Exactly. And then... And also the, the, the consumers at some point. Uh, the consumers over here? Uh, yeah, because, yeah, that's like... Uh, Basically, the, the idea is just that an Oracle is some kind of uh, data market. Uh, and so if you want to create some kind of network effect, you have to have people on both sides. Uh, so okay. data providers at the left and consumers at the right. Uh, and so that's also, I, I think that's uh, where the token will be introduced uh, in order like to uh, manage the this market. Um, so yeah, that's like the, the, the general idea behind this. Yeah, no, I mean, one of the parts that we've thought about, like with how, how do you decentralize, I guess, the usage of it? So you have like a verifier contract and then, I mean, you have like, you know, like, well, let's say it's a, a stable coin, like maker, for instance, and they, they have the price feed, um, do they have something, do they just consume it blindly or do they have is it best practice to put a dispute mechanism in there or like, you know, like, do you give that, do you give your chain any sovereignty to fork um, and change the very, or even change the verifier contract if there's governance issues? Like how, how do you sort of manage that? Or how are you thinking about talking to users about that? So, so if you're uh, consuming data, basically yeah. you have to, so there's no mechanism to uh, force uh, like the 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 proving, so the the proving is uh, only forced to mainnet. But if you want to consume on uh, Polygon, you have to uh, get the proof, and so request it. Uh, then the proofs get verified. So it's like a, a full based mechanism. Um, but I, I didn't get like the end of the question about um, how we want to manage forks or. Yeah, I mean, like, do you do you guys assume that this is like? a sovereign chain in any way like if somebody like i know it's not decentralized now but if somebody do you have the ability for your form for uh your chain to fork you know like this is like a question with optimism and like how do you how do you actually handle that uh yeah so for now we can uh upgrade it uh, and i think it's going to be the case for uh a long time because there's like uh we need to manage uh, like improvements and everything. Yep. Uh, and so we can see also with our rollups uh, and even like optimistic rollups that have been live for uh, a few years now that uh, it's still like uh, pretty complex to manage this. Uh, and I think that to be honest, we'll just like uh, look into what others are doing, especially like Arbitrum Optimism uh, in order to manage that uh, because they will be like years uh, above us uh, for this. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that's like the, the idea. Nice. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I, I think we got a good view here of Pragma Oracle. I think the last one would be just kind of a soft one, like, you know, in, in building this, like, like how has your view of Oracle's changed over the years that you've been kind of at this? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like, uh, really complex. And I think that's like, and that, that's why we are working on this. That's a problem we're uh, looking into it uh, because um, mainly if you think about this uh, for uh, price feeds, um, basically you're uh, leveraging uh, Ethereum. So like thousands of computers that are verifying uh, and running your computation. Uh, and at the end, you get data from like uh, pretty much like trusted services. And I think that's like a really uh, big area where we need to uh, work on uh, in order to make system much more uh, trustless, uh, especially like the, um, the 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 bricks of DeFi that are at the really bottom of DeFi. If you're like using aggregators, uh, I mean, it's uh, it may be okay to uh, use um, trusted services, but at the very bottom. Um, like we need to have things that are really resilient, um, in how we, uh, both in like the system itself and how we get data. 
Uh, and so there, there's still a, a lot of work to do. Um, so it's going to take time. Uh, but yeah, like really, it's really a space worth uh, looking into. Awesome. No, well, thank you so much for coming on. And yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure.